So we haven't talked about keyboards on this channel in a while, have we? And the mechanical keyboard market is as prolific as it was a year before. You got gaming keyboards, ergonomic keyboards, super expensive boutique keyboards. There's a whole market dedicated to DIY keyboard parts and some custom builds end up costing a few thousand dollars in parts. So what makes this keyboard so special? Well, for starters, the company that makes it doesn't even specialize in keyboards. Their main thing is an open source, open hardware laptop, MNT Reform, which comes with a full blown mechanical keyboard. And this is basically a standalone version of that keyboard, MNT Reform standalone keyboard. When I saw the renders, I immediately knew I wanted to feature it on my channel. So I reached out to MNT and asked them for a review unit, and Lucas Hartman, the CEO of MNT, agreed to send me one. I will be sending the keyboard back after the review though, and the company didn't pay me to make the video. So, about the keyboard. The first thing that I noticed when I first looked at it is just how gorgeous it is. It has an anodized aluminum body, concave keycaps with backlit legends, and a tiny OLED screen at the top. There are also multiple choices of colors, including lime, purple, and even translucent. As you can see, this particular keyboard has Cyrillic legends, which I think looks really cool. Usually Russian keyboards have both Cyrillic and Latin character legends, and most of the times it ends up looking kind of messy, in my opinion. Looking at the MNT Reform keyboard, you might think that it's a rubber dome keyboard. But don't be fooled by its size, it's actually a full-fledged mechanical keyboard. It features low-profile kale chalk brown tactile switches, and in this sense it's actually more mechanical than my daily driver, HHKP Classic. This one technically has rubber dome switches. After taking a closer look at the keyboard, you also immediately notice the layout. It has two split space bars, and the ALT keys are placed in the middle of the keyboard, which definitely takes some getting used to. There are also dedicated page down and page up buttons, and an actual row of F keys, which I didn't expect in such a small keyboard. The typing angle is adjustable, and you can do that by adjusting the position of this horizontal bracket. There are four settings, which is pretty cool, but the bracket also has those tiny plastic spacers that go between the bar and the keyboard. They're easy to lose and a pain to put back, so you're probably not going to want to adjust the typing angle too often. The keyboard also has a tiny OLED display at the top, which, together with the circle key, can be used to adjust settings like the backlight brightness, or even display a custom image, which is pretty cool. Sound and feel are also pretty important for a mechanical keyboard, and the MNT Reform keyboard doesn't disappoint in that regard. The switches do have a shorter travel than your typical Cherry switch, but the keys still have a satisfying tactile feedback to them. Here's an idea what that sounds like. Personally, if I were to keep this keyboard, I'd definitely replace the switches with something quieter. But if you're a fan of the typical mechanical keyboard sound, I think you might like it. Thankfully, MNT does sell this keyboard without switches as well, so you can just put any switches you want. You can also put some O-rings in the keycaps to dampen the sound. It works pretty well, but also reduces the key travel. Speaking of the keycaps, the F and J keys don't have the usual nubs on them, which I found kind of disorienting. But you can also go the DIY route and just drill some tiny holes in the keycaps. Now let's talk about the software. Unlike most mechanical keyboards that run the QMK firmware, MNT Reform Keyboard comes with its own custom firmware written in C. Okay, so right off the bat, while I was recording the video, QMK actually got ported to the MNT Reform Keyboard, which is amazing. But first, let's go over the stock firmware. The source code for the keyboard firmware is hosted on GitLab, and in order to customize it and flash it to our keyboard, we first have to clone it to our computer. So I'll just do that real quick, and by the way, I'm cloning the branch called kbd-bitmaps, but by the time you're watching this video, the custom bitmap functionality for the OLED screen might already be merged into the main branch. The repository includes the firmware for all of the components of the MNT Reform laptop, including the keyboard, so it might take a while to clone. Once it's done cloning, we're gonna change into the directory called reform2-keyboard-fw. So if we want to customize the layout, we need to edit the C header file called matrix.h manually. Thankfully, there's an example included in the repo from Ellen Kirby's matrix underscore h which already has some customizations that we can use as a reference point. So we can just replace the default matrix file with it and edit this file instead. First thing I would do is remap the right spacebar to backspace. That way I don't have to reach so far with my pinky. I'm also going to replace the actual backspace on the top left with a tilt key, since that's the way it is on my HHKB. For that we need to copy the default second row from the file called keyboard.h, remove the definition and the slashes at the end of the lines, and finally replace key underscore backspace with this. 
Last thing we need to do is ensure that this line is uncommented in the file called constants.h. The MNT Reform laptop pretty much uses the same keyboard firmware for its internal keyboard, so we need to tell the compiler that we're using a standalone keyboard instead. And that's it! Let's compile the firmware. But before that, we're gonna need to install some dependencies. I'm gonna leave the link to these instructions in the description, and since I'm on Mac, I'm gonna follow the instructions for Mac here. Now that that's done, let's compile the firmware by typing make and pressing enter. And here we go! Now, before actually flashing the firmware, we need to put our keyboard into the flashing mode. And that's pretty much the most annoying part, because in order to do that, we basically need to take apart the whole keyboard. Once you take the keyboard out of the case, you'll see a dip switch and a button above the F4 key. We're gonna need to flip that switch into the on position, plug the USB cable into the keyboard and press the button below the switch to reset the keyboard's internal programming chip. This should become much easier in the next version of the firmware, so depending on when you're seeing this video, there might be an easier way. And uploading your updated firmware onto the keyboard is as easy as typing sudo dash slash flash dot sh. Once the flashing is complete, we can test our new layout. Looks good! Now one more feature that this new firmware has is the custom screen images. MNT Reform Keyboard exposes an HID raw device to the operating system, which you can use to display pretty much anything – a picture, an animation, or a text. As far as I know, this functionality is only supported on Linux, so let me fire up a virtual machine and I'll show you how it works. So here we have a folder called KBD GFX demo which contains some scripts to work with the built-in display. Here we first need to execute build.sh, and now we're ready to test it. Let's type dot slash kbd gfx dot sh slash dev slash hid raw 3 and now if we look at our keyboard, we should see a sine wave animation. Nice! There are a few more scripts in this folder. Text.sh lets you display any text on the screen, as long as it fits. Picture and Picture-Floyd let you display a custom image, but do keep in mind that it's a monochrome display with a resolution of 126 to 32, so don't expect to run Doom on it. However, there are definitely some use cases for this display. You can use it to display some stats, like email or messenger notifications, the current price of Bitcoin or even the number of subscribers on your favorite YouTube channel. And since both firmware and hardware are completely open source, the only limit is your imagination. So yeah, the stock firmware definitely has some unique features compared to the QMK firmware, which doesn't support the screen customizations as far as I know. It does, however, allow for much easier key remapping, so you definitely have a choice in that regard. And finally, let's talk about the pricing. The MNT Reform standalone keyboard costs 199 euros, or about 230 bucks. And the price doesn't change, even if you get the version without any switches. And I'm not sure if that's gonna change in the future. When it comes to price with the switches, I think it's pretty fair. 200 euros is not a lot for a mechanical keyboard, especially considering the anodized aluminum body, the custom-made keycaps, and the R&D that went into the keyboard. That being said, I could definitely see how some people might find the price too steep. After all, you could simply go on AliExpress and buy a decent low-profile mechanical keyboard for half the price. So why go with this one? Well, you'd be supporting a European company focused on open source, open hardware products that respect your freedom and right to repair. MNT publishes source code and schematics for all of their products, and considering that, and the quality of the keyboard itself, I think the price is more than justified. The only gripe that I have with pricing so far is that the version without switches basically costs the same as the version with the switches. As I mentioned before, I'm not sure if that's going to be changed in the future, but it would definitely be nice to be able to save some money on the switches that you're not going to use anyway. All in all, I really like the MNT Reform keyboard. It's very rare to see a pre-built keyboard that is so well built and looks so good without the annoying gamer aesthetics. The layout definitely takes some getting used to, and the lack of an easy way to remap the keys is unfortunate. But even with that in mind, I would definitely consider getting one if I didn't already have my HHKB Classic. I'm just too attached to this thing, I just I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> So that's gonna be it for today's video, and as usual, I do want to thank my patrons. Boris Levinson, Remus Ilias, Morse Networked, Laserbat, Julian, David Love, Prometheus, Robots Dream of Crypto, Mitchell Valentino, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.